So we already went through the accuracy differences of height over bore uh, when we did our world tallest scope based video. When we were looking at all the comments, there was a lot of people that thought that can't would be affected by the height over bore. Which makes sense because when you look at a higher scope base, the scope looks like it's off left or right the more can't you have in it or the can't you have in it compared to a low scope base. But the thing you have to realize is whole group shifts substantially. So when we started the testing on this, we decided to go with a, a standard height over bore uh, of right around two and a quarter, two and a half inches. And then we also went with the uh, our sky high scope base, which is 18 inches, works out to about a 20 inch height over bore. We wanted to try and eliminate as much environmentals as possible. And shooting outside, you're always gonna have the wind affecting where your bullet impacts left or right of your point of aim. So to, to remove as much environmental influence as we possibly could from the data, we went with shooting a 22 rimfire at 200 yards. The reason we decided to go shoot the, the 22 at 200 yards, uh, it works out to approximately the elevation you're gonna see with a 308, say at between uh, five and 650 yards area. The rifle's gonna be zeroed at 50 yards. Our target will be at 200 yards, and we're gonna test the cant at two degrees and then five degrees. We are gonna shoot four groups per degree. Two groups will be left cant and two groups will be right cant. Each group is going to be made up of 10 shots. We're going to first do this process with the regular scope base, and then we're going to repeat it with the sky high scope base. Okay, so looking at the groups again, you can see that uh, when we canted to the right, the rounds landed low and right. To make this information and future information easier to understand, we took the average of the left and the right cant groups. We then measured the average displacement between those two groups to get what we called the two degrees of cant. After we finished up shooting our two degrees of cant groups, we ended up going over to a five degrees left and right just to take this a little more to the extreme and uh, try to show you what's actually happening downrange. The center one here, I was canted to the uh, to the right, so it was like I was reading uh, 95 degrees, and all my whole group is way over here on the edge of the paper. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There actually is ten on here, but just barely. Um, and then I went up here to the top one, and I did uh, five degrees to the right, which was 85 degrees. Um, and you can see a whole group over here as well. So the group size stays the same, the whole, but the whole group shifts substantially. After we finished shooting the low height over bore uh, setup, we took that scope off, uh, threw the high, sky high scope base on, and then re-zeroed the gun at 50 yards again. The groups canted to the right, you can see the first group was decent. It was obviously to the right though still. Um, and right about the same as what it was with the low base. Same with the second one, when it was canted to the right, it was actually a little bit tighter group. The wind dropped off obviously a little bit. Um, this first group, when it was canted to the, the left, obviously it went to all to the left. Uh, second one was a little more centered up, um, but it was still over to the left side. Uh, so with the conditions we have, it looks like it's doing pretty much the exact same thing as it did before uh, with a low scope base. I zeroed, or took my elevation, my windage on this bottom target here. So fairly centered up, sitting a little bit right. And then I moved up to this one here as my point of aim in my center. And then I canted uh, five degrees right. So there's my group for that one. Five degrees left. And then the same thing up here. So another five degrees right. And five degrees left.
So when we did our initial testing, we did know that we we're gonna have wind affecting our groups. And that is why we did incorporate the left and the right hand groups together to average them out for that displacement from center or from the point of aim to your point of impacts. Uh, when I did go to put together all the data we had, which wasn't a lot of data points, I wasn't happy with how much we had there to work out the averages. So I decided to go out for a second day and shot about another 500 rounds so we get a much larger sample size and really nail down what we want, what we were seeing. So the test results showed that almost identical that the your cant on a low scope base was the same as a high scope base. So we can say right now that there is no difference uh, between running a low and a high. Um, with the group size we were seeing, uh, they were almost identical for both sets of groups. So to explain this a little bit better, we ended up making up a rendering to show how the actual bullet flies through the air and how the cant actually affects it. So you can see here when it is plumb or level, the bullet flies straight, where it, it flies directly above the line of sight, back into the target, and there it, that's where it lands at. When you actually cant it over, the bullet actually transitions through the original uh, trajectory, and then you can see how it uh, continues over towards the left and then drops off a little bit to the, to the left. You can see with the high scope base that the arc looks much higher than over a standard scope base. When we actually calculate it out, the time of flight is identical or very close to it. And so the, the time that the gravity is affecting that bullet is identical. And that is why we see the same point of impact uh, when it's canted um, on the high one and on the low.